Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. So today we're going to do the second in a series of videos about the PS Vita. Today I'm going to show you how to use an SD card adapter that'll allow you to use just a plain old micro SD card as your storage for the PS Vita. This is going to allow you to store hundreds and hundreds of gigs of data onto the device. So you'll be able to load up backups of all your PS Vita games, your PSP games, PS1 games, and even all the classic games that you can play on emulators like RetroArch. Now this video is not going to show you how to load up all of those games, that's going to be for later videos. This is really just going to give you the building blocks so that you have the storage space to do that later on. And on top of that, we're going to use a newer tool to do this, which gives you increased stability and much faster loading times than with the other tools which are commonly available. So I'm pretty excited to show off this new method. So without any further delay, let's jump into it. Okay, so if you go to the site that's linked in the video description below, I'll have a link to this micro SD adapter. And this thing only costs $6 on Amazon, so it's super affordable and totally worth it. You're also going to want to get an SD card, and I have links to those on my website as well. So here we are with the PS Vita that I permanently modded in the previous video. So if you haven't watched that video yet, you're going to need to mod your PS Vita. After that, all you need to do is grab an SD card and get the micro SD adapter. I'm going to use a 128 gig card here today. So the tool we're going to use is called YAMT, yet another remount tool. And this just came out last summer, but I haven't seen a lot of videos about it. And it's this really exciting tool, and I'll show you why later on. But for now, let's just go ahead and download it. So you're going to want to go to the GitHub page that I have linked in my written guide, and then download the YAMT VPK. And if you don't know already, a VPK is basically just an app that runs on the PS Vita. So what we want to do is we want to plug the device into our computer using a USB cable. Now you may get this connecting sign here, just go ahead and close out of this, you don't need to worry about this. And that's because instead of the built-in content manager app, we're going to use the Vita Shell app here. This is the preferred app to transfer files back and forth on your device. And then you just hit select to start up the connection. On your computer, you're going to see a window pop up of your device. Let's go ahead and make a new folder here, let's just call it VPKs, that way we have a place to organize all of our apps. So inside here, let's put that YAMT VPK. And that's it, now we've transferred it over to our device. So to close our USB connection, go ahead and push the X button. And then if you scroll all the way down here, you're gonna see the VPKs folder. And there it is. Let's go ahead and install this VPK. It's gonna ask you to confirm, just hit yes, and then we're gonna install. And that's it, we're done with Vita Shell now, so we'll close this out eventually, three or four swipes later, and there it is. And this is the installer file here. So we're going to go in here, and then you can see it says install the light version. That's the one we want to do. We don't need the full version. And that's it. Once you install it, it's going to say rebooting. So here we are with a freshly rebooted PS Vita, and we're going to put in this micro SD card adapter now. And don't worry about the format or file system of this micro SD card. We're going to format it in the device itself. So now let's go into the settings, go ahead and hit the start button, and then select devices, storage devices. And here, check this first box, and then here we're going to change out our UXO or our file system to either the memory card or your internal storage. Memory card is if you have a PS Vita 1000, internal storage is if you have a 2000. Now the UMAO, we're going to change to the SD to Vita. Now under the developer options, this is where you format the card. Just click on that and it's going to format it. Now let's just reboot our device. Okay, now that we've rebooted, let's go into Vita Shell and verify that everything's correctly configured. Okay, so if you look at the file system here, you can see that UMAO is now 119 gigabytes. That's our SD card. That's now a storage space. The UXO, which is our file system, is still one gig, and that's the internal storage on the PS Vita 2000. So let's go into the UXO folder here, and we're going to copy everything over to the SD card. So you just hit the triangle button and then mark all, and then the triangle button again, copy, and then you've copied all these files. And then we're going to go into UMAO, which is going to be basically empty because we just formatted it, and then hit the triangle button and then paste. And then just give it a minute. It's going to copy all these files over from the UXO system files over to this UMAO storage. This is basically moving everything the system needs over to the SD card. Okay, once that's been moved over, go ahead and close out of Vita Shell. And then let's go back into the settings and we're going to change which storage space is going to be our file system. 
So go back to Devices, Storage Devices, and then change the UXO to the SD Devita. Now that they have the same files, we can do that. And then change the UMAO to the internal storage. So we're basically just swapping the drives here. And that's it. You can close out of settings, and then we're going to reboot the device again. Okay, so here we are with a freshly rebooted PS Vita. Everything should be in order. Let's check out Vita Shell just to confirm. Okay, so here we are. You can see that UMAO is now one gigabyte and the UXO is now 119 gigabytes. So now our system file uses the SD card. Perfect. So now you're probably super excited about loading things up onto your device. So let's start with the Vita Homebrew browser. And this is a very simple tool that will basically open up a storefront so that you can download other VPKs. So just go ahead and download this either from their GitHub page or their dedicated website. Now before we plug the device back into the computer, one thing you do want to do is hit the start button while in Vita Shell and go and change your USB device to the SD to Vita. That means that when you make your USB connection, it's going to connect to the SD card. So let's plug it in now. We're going to hit select. And then back on our computer, you can see it opening up with a new file, and this is going to be your SD card. So into the VPKs folder again, let's move over this Vita homebrew browser. We can also delete the other VPK. We don't need it anymore. So back on our device, we're going to close out the USB connection. We can even unplug the device at this point, and let's go into our UXO, which is our SD card. We'll go into the VPKs folder. And sure enough, there's the Homebrew Browser VPK. So let's go ahead and install this VPK. And it's going to ask, hey, do you really want to do this? And you say, yeah, man, I want to do it. You hit the circle button. It'll take a minute to install, and you're good to go. So close out a Vita shell at this point, and there's the Homebrew Browser. Let's go ahead and start it up and see what it's like. Now, one thing I want to make note of is that when you first start up the Homebrew Browser for the very first time, it's going to take a long time to load. It's going to show you two splash screens in the beginning and then a black screen. And this black screen can last all the way up to like five, even 10 minutes. So just give it time and it'll boot up. And here you are. Here's the browser. You can sort it by different games and ports and emulators. And it has a search function. This is where you're going to find things like the Grand Theft Auto port or standalone emulators, all of those kind of things. Just know that for most of these ports, you're going to need to bring in your own commercial file. And there are lots of tutorials out there on the internet that'll show you how to do that. And I'll make videos for some of these later as well. But for now, this is going to be the best place to start when it comes to finding different emulators or different homebrew games. Now, one of the great things about the tool that we just used is that it formats the card in a TXFAT file system. And this file system is what's used on the official memory cards for this device. What that means is that it's going to have very fast boot times. So let's check the different boot time for these two different tools. Remember, the PS Vita on top has the new tool, the YAMT tool, and the one on the bottom has the old tool, which is called the Storage Manager plugin. So look at that. In 13 seconds, you're able to boot up on the PS Vita 2000 using that new tool. Meanwhile, the one on the bottom is still going. And it's not because the PS Vita 1000 is any slower or anything like that. It has to do with the file system of the SD card below. So there you go, it takes about 30 seconds to do it the old method. So I definitely encourage you to use the newer method, which I have in this video. But just in case you want to use the older method, I do have that written down in my written guide, which is linked in the video description. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. I really just wanted to show you how to use an SD card on your PS Vita. Now that you have a completely modded device, as well as a big old SD card in your PS Vita, you're now ready to start loading it up with backups of your PS Vita games or your PSP games, PS1 games, all that stuff. At this point, the sky's the limit. So my plans for the next few videos are going to be things like how to set up RetroArch, how to get PSP and PS1 games running, as well as some of my favorite plugins to get the most out of your device. But I'm not really sure where to start, so let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see next. And be sure to check out the written guide which I have linked in the video description in case you get stuck anywhere. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming!